Welcome to On The Radar, our weekly weather chat where we chat about all things weather. Now today we're going to be talking about the fallout from the East Coast floods. So I'm joined by ABC reporter up in the Wide Bay, Johanna Marie, uh, to talk to us about how things have been going on up there. And then we're also going to be looking at what to do if your house has been flooded or if you're trying to deal with mould at the moment. And then we're hoping to leave you on a bit of an uplifting end. So stay tuned. So over the last few days, we've obviously been focused on the flooding down near Sydney. But of course, it's just the latest in a series of devastating floods over the last few weeks. So I'm joined by Johanna Marie from the Wide Bay office up in sort of the more sort of central areas of Queensland. Now, she's here to tell us about what went down up there, but also the impressive implementation of a temporary levy, which managed to hold back the floodwaters. So, Johanna, thank you so much for joining us. So can you tell us what it's been like up there in the Wide Bay? Hi, Kate. Yeah, well, as you've seen in the last two months, we've had two major flooding events across the Wide Bay and it sort of went from Gympie uh, to the North Burnett and into Maribor CBD itself. So quite widespread flooding that's really destroyed, you know, lots of livestock, farming, equipment, uh, fencing to, to many different areas, but also in main CBD areas like Gympie and Maribor, people's homes have been inundated and, you know, they've lost basically everything. So it's affected thousands of people here in the Wide Bay area. Okay, and so how is it comparing to past events that locals will have been familiar with? Now, uh, well, they have experienced major flooding before. We had the 2013 floods was the last major flooding that they had. And, and this recent flood just last week did reach that and exceed those levels. So a bit more widespread this time around, we're seeing areas, you know, quite, quite big areas um, being affected by flooding. So as you can imagine, it's a, a huge cleanup effort going on right now. So obviously, there's been a huge amount of devastation in the region. But we did have one good story which came out that we heard about all around the country about the levee in Maryborough. Could you possibly tell us a little bit about how that worked this time around? It's quite a simplistic concept, I guess, and it was pretty amazing to see it up close like I got to see it. Um, it's basically just steel A-frames that stretched through Maribor CBD and the, the council bought this um, technology or this prototype. They bought it for about $6 million, so relatively cheap in terms of flood mitigation options and, and how much that can cost councils and governments. Um, but it was basically A-frames, steel A-frames that ran down the street in a row and with plastic tarp covering it on top with just held down by some chains. So fairly simple um, concept, but yeah, it was really effective. It was able to to hold back that major 10.5 metre flood and saved most of those businesses in Maribor CBD from being inundated by flooding. It worked this time, but not the time before. Do they have any idea why it worked one time, but not the other? Yes, we had um, the, the last flooding six weeks ago was the first time the Fraser Coast Regional Council had tried to use this levy that, they, that they'd purchased after the 2013 floods. So this is the first time they, they put it into action. It was rolled out, but there was a failure of the, the floodgates and the stormwater system underneath the levy, which caused the floodwater to be able to come through from beneath the levy. Um, so this time around, unfortunately, last time that did mean most of of that CBD and many businesses had flood water through them about at least a foot through their actual storefront, like storefronts in their retail shops, but also their basements were completely filled with water. So they lost a lot of property during that last flooding. And this time the Fraser Coast Council was able to fix that stormwater problem and rolled out the levy for the second time in six weeks and it held up, which was, you know, it became sort of the hero of the town there. Everyone in the CBD with businesses um, that were saved by that were pretty appreciative and, you know, just happy to see that they, they were saved from, you know, a second major flood in six weeks. Well, 
best of luck for the rest of the wet season, I guess, and with all the cleanup. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, our best regards to everyone in the wide bay. Thank you. So for anyone just joining us, this is On The Radar, our weekly weather chat where we chat about all things weather. Now, thousands of people up and down the East Coast are now dealing with the aftermath of this flooding situation and with all of the rain, even if you haven't been flooded. So many people are dealing with mould, et cetera, at the moment. So I wanted to talk about the next steps that you should be taking if you're dealing with one of these situations. So here's some of the information my colleagues have pulled together on what to do if you're in a post-flood situation or if you're dealing with mould. So there are a few different uh, takes on what you should be doing after a natural disaster. This one has been put together looking at southeast Queensland in particular, but obviously applies to wherever you are for the most part. Uh, really, the things you need to be thinking about after a flood is obviously it's a pretty dangerous situation to be going into. Uh, please wear protective clothing. Uh, for Queenslanders, that means no thongs. Please find some shoes. Uh, it's not to be taken lightly out there. There's plenty of nasty stuff going around. The other thing to think about is anything electrical uh, that has come into contact with water will need to be checked with an electrician before it can be used again. Also keep an eye out there for any structural issues. Uh, we don't want you to be surviving a flood and then going back in and getting into trouble um, with structural issues. Tap water, make sure you've been in touch with your council to check that the drinking water is safe after a flood. Um, also a good idea to make sure that you clean out those taps and let the water run for a while. Food, you're smart people out there, guys. If it's looking nasty, don't eat it. Um, and then mould, we'll come back to that in just a sec. But the other thing to really think about, and this came apparent in the 2011 floods, is make sure you check in with your insurer before you start to do too much of a cleanup. Lots of the time they'll want to have information or even do an inspection before you start to really clean up um, your flooded homes. Uh, so please make sure that you're not hurting yourself in the long run by dealing with things too quickly. Sometimes these things take time. At the very least, make sure you get in touch um, with them and take as many photos and records as you possibly can so that you're safer in the long term. Now, speaking of mould, uh, we do have some other articles. The ABC crews have been busy um, talking about what to do in a mould situation. Now, mould is, of course, affecting lots of people on the East Coast at the moment. My Facebook feed is full of people with ridiculously disgusting uh, mould photos at the moment um, from up and down the East Coast. Uh, basically, mould likes damp situations to grow in, and there's plenty of that going around at the moment. Now, this article goes into a lot of details of how to clean different things. Uh, if you listen to my grandmother, vinegar and clove oil are the ways to do it, but this has got a few different examples. Uh, but the most important thing to remember is to keep your house as ventilated as possible. So keeping um, your windows open if you possibly can and the rain isn't coming in worse or the humidity is not worse outside. Uh, dehumidifiers, uh, putting your air conditioners onto the dry mode all the things that you possibly can to keep yourself just that little bit better ventilated, especially if you're further south and you're not quite used to this much humidity, um, doing your best to really get the air going through the house. There's a reason why the old Queenslanders are very airy places. It's to try and keep that ventilation going in these mouldy situations. And remember, mould is really quite dangerous, so do your best to try and not breathe it in, and it is worth taking seriously. Now, the last thing that I just wanted to bring up is, of course, everyone's mental health. It's been a really trying few weeks. Um, the adrenaline's probably waning for many people at the moment, and it could be feeling like it's too much. So this is just a really a reminder to check in with each other, folks. Um, you all do a good job of looking out for each other, and I've seen a lot of great support over the last few weeks. But a reminder that even though it might not be in the headlines for the next few weeks, uh, we need to be looking out for each other. And there's more information on here about where to go to if you need some more of that support. And of course, we'll be providing all of these links.
Now, it's looking like we might finally get a bit of a break from these flooding rains. The latest east coast low has moved off of the coast and it's looking like a high pressure system is about to move across the country. There is still a chance of some showers around, especially for the tropics, but hopefully we do get a little bit of a break. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's over. There's still a lot of recovering to do and there's still plenty of time left in the tropical wet season. Uh, that traditionally goes all the way through to the end of April. So there's still plenty of time for some more wet periods. So it's really important that we keep looking out for each other out there and do everything that we can to keep spirits high for the rest of the season. So today I'm going to leave you with a little something from the legendary Jimmy Barnes and his family. And until next week, I'm Kate Doyle and this has been On The Radar. Have you got Jimmy? Yeah. You see everybody there? <laughs> Jimmy, are you in? Yeah. We've got EJ, we've got Teddy, and of course you know Teddy's going to be singing. This is a special request. It was a request by the Mayor of Ballina. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor of Ballina. Ballina. This uh, special song. Special song for you guys. And we know, I'm just turning that that way a little bit, we know that uh, you've had a hard time with the floods and the rain up there. We had a little it's bit of rain down this. here, and we feel for you. Wish we could do something more than sing this, but it's the best we've got. That's what we do. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Class again. We're thinking about you folks. All the best up there. Stay strong.